Cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Danny or Danielle. I am a current PhD student here in, within the School of Computer Science and Psychology. And as well, I, I did my undergraduate here at Lincoln again in computer science. So my talk today is all about video games, anxiety, and which is kind of the basis of my PhD as well as kind of what my undergraduate project was as well. And so what's being uh, covered in today's talk is kind of a definition of anxiety. So what is it, pulling that definition apart, how it affects a person, what is fear versus what is anxiety and kind of how those two terms are often intertwined then is all about mental health and um, how prevalent anxiety is within students in the lockdown period, as well as then talking about games and mental health and the different types of games. So the ones that boost mental health and the ones that kind of improve um, people's lives. And then finally, I'll, I'll go through my research, summarizing my dissertation project and how um, that influenced my PhD and again, summarizing that. So what is anxiety? So anxiety is the mind and body's uh, reaction to stressful, dangerous or unfamiliar situations. It's the sense of uneasiness, distress or dread you may feel before a significant event. So let's kind of break that term down a bit. Um, so it's the kind of reaction to stressful, dangerous or unfamiliar situations. For example, uh, this could be like a new environment, uh, the kind of movement to a new workplace or the transition to the university. Um, this is definitely a stressful time period as you are engaged within unfamiliar environments and situations you may never have been a part of before. And, and the only one I can think of is a party club environment you you may have not have been in that kind of situation before and you're away from your family you're away from anything familiar you're with people you kind of just met so you kind of it's your body's reaction to that that new environment that preparation of future threats but there is a certain level of anxiety that does help us stay alert and aware especially if you do find yourself within a, a dangerous setting or environment so next is the the sense of uneasiness distress or dread you may feel it's the symptoms or reactions whether they're emotional or physical so the emotional responses can be like the panic or dread as well as that uncontrollable thinking and racing thoughts and feeling irritable and that difficulty concentrating and then there's the physical side of it there's the, the nausea, the difficulty sleeping, the increased heart rate, breathing, like you sweat and tremble and shake. And uh, this could be before a presentation. So the night before, you might have that difficulty sleeping, you start to panic, you overthink about all the things that could go wrong. And then like, yeah, you, you just overthink and you kind of panic, you get that yourself into that kind of sense of uneasiness. So yeah, there's these significant events, these future threats. So the presentations or or the, the phone calls to doctors, um, anything in the future that could you could deem stressful and could cause you to feel uneasy. So next is like anxiety versus fear. Within an anxiety disorder, um, it's generally like kind of comprised of a combination of kind of acute fear and anxiety and together these kind of emotional states can cause like behavioral changes um which kind of changes an individual's habits or demeanor changes their sorry kind of personality and so there's there's fear and fear is categorized as this emotional response to real or kind of perceived imminent threat whereas anxiety is defined as that anticipation of a future threat so generally both of these states come hand in hand however fear is accompanied by that automatic biological escape response which if you don't know it's that fight or flight when you're in a situation it's kind of a very animalistic response 
or in the wild, an animal would see danger, they'd either kind of fight it or they'd run away from it. Whereas the anxiety side of it is that kind of preparation for that future threat. You may avoid public speaking um, because of all the things that could go wrong. And, and individuals can be uh, diagnosed with transient fear or anxiety, which is a typically a stress induced um, and will last no longer than six months. So stress induced and high pressure environments kind of tend to lead to an increase in that stress. And this can be within like the transition to uni is a combination of those both high stress and um, high pressure environments as students kind of have that academic pressure imposed upon them as well as being within that unfamiliar environment. Typically, first year students enter university with that limited social support network and have that increased pressure to fit in, um, fit in and make those friends. And then this pressure may lead to some individuals to be anxious and um, about those social situations due to there's this cognitive ideation of being negatively evaluated by others. And that kind of causes individuals to become avoidant of social interactions because of that potentiality of being scrutinized and such as the fear that may accompany kind of social or romantic rejection or there's the embarrassment that may come from getting lost within a public environment such as getting lost on campus and with the COVID kind of experience for university students has hit, had that impact on that transition to university and typically students have been able to engage socially within like face-to-face -face lectures and society gatherings however these events have obviously not been able to be on kind of had that different experience and this could like continue into the future with like the increase in online courses and people working from home and it's similar to how e-learners um, engage within university, students within lockdown have had that limited social interaction as well as having the reduced um, kind of engagement on campus. And this may lead to kind of not being comfortable within the university environment, not being able to create a, ooh, what just happened there? That social support network Sorry, my something's happened. Here we go. Don't know what happened there. Um, so these social support networks are vital for students to be kind of fit in and kind of feel supported within these environments. And it's these support networks are kind of conceptualized as resources available to one's um, kind of network and they play an everyday part in supporting oneself and and um, helping with those everyday problems and those maybe those more serious problems and meaning that a larger network an individual has um and oh wait let me start again so it has been shown that with these social support networks this has increased um a better mental and physical health and by having a larger social support network you're able to have a better kind of mental health and um, without developing that, this could lead to a decrease in mental health. There is a study, I think, on The Guardian that they conducted, um, which showed like the number of university dropouts um, is a direct correlation of students' mental health. There, I think there was around like a thousand students across the UK dropped out because of their poor mental health. And there was around like, I think 90,000 that um, requested counselling as a result of their mental health. And, and especially during this time, the universities have kind of predicted a high dropout rates because of the overwhelming pressure that, that COVID has um, had on students. So next is how has a lockdown affected everyone's mental health? 
So again, the, according to The Guardian, um, the student experience during lockdown has caused an influx um, in students struggling with anxiety, depression, kind of struggling with their mental health. And then there was this statistics, but though that 74% of young adults aged 18 to 24 suggested that their mental health had lowered during the pandemic. And in addition to this, there are individuals who have, who have no previous um, mental health issues prior to like the pandemic declared that 22% felt that their mental health was poor or very poor. And then there are specific elemental drivers that have worsened mental health during the pandemic and this is like the social isolation side um has brought like a lot of loneliness to a lot of people especially those who, who live alone and uh, those in poor health and those those individuals who are in rented accommodation so students and then moreover the lockdown has uh, diminished many people's ability to cope with stress uh, especially with the limited access to certain spaces and not being able to meet with friends or family. And in addition to this, like the health services have reported an inability to meet the demand, like rising, uh, demand rising prior to the pandemic and with lockdown adding kind of that more pressure and uh, which is likely to increase in the future. And then we're moving on to how games have helped how games are continuing to help improve people's um mental health and their lives so there are a, a two kind of category i mean there's more than two but the my research focuses on kind of two categories there are therapeutic devices therapeutic interventions which directly kind of improve people's mental health help them build coping mechanisms help them be able to deal with their anxiety their fear and then there's the games that improve directly improve mental health via playing it. And there's the there's the um, research that's come out by the University of Oxford recently that about Animal Crossing, how playing that can help improve your uh, mental health. So I have a video about um, two of them. So on the left, there's the therapeutic device called Dojo, and that's some pictures from Dojo. So I'll, I'll give a video of it now this works. Oh, stop, just pause.
more about uh, Dojo. So Dojo's original purpose was to help teach uh, meditative stress management skills to teens um, kind of um, help who have trouble controlling their kind of anger and, and the game begins in a subway station uh, with like a mysterious wall that opens up to an underground urban dojo. Um, so dojo has three rooms, fear, frustration and anger, each one with um, two relaxation tutorials and, and challenges kind of um, and game like challenges that help are designed to trigger emotions and questions that kind of offer the opportunity to practice those acquired techniques. So the first room is the fear dojo uh, and this teaches uh, players deep breathing techniques um, before the player uh, needs to like, navigate a maze uh, in which they must evade an angered spirit as you probably saw in the video and the character is be able to outrun the spirit as long as they control their heart rate through these deep breathing coping like techniques. Then the next um, room is the the frustration no nope, yes the frustration dojo and uh, the player uh, is taught kind of muscle relaxation techniques and they must navigate another maze um as a kind of a, a ball and they and they must navigate without hitting the walls and when the player's heart rate again increases the ball grows larger which makes it more difficult to successfully navigate so they must use these muscle relaxation techniques and maybe as well the breathing techniques to keep their heart rate down and then finally there's the anger dojo and this teaches like positive self-talk and guided self-place imagery and here the player must take part in kind of a hand slapping contest i don't know whether you've probably done that with your friends i know i have um and you kind of have to dodge the there's the dojo master's effort the person you're playing against and the game reinforces the practical use of relaxation techniques and the higher the heart rate the faster the dojo master slaps and the question on board the question on the screen is do you like the color blue so you have to answer that and not kind of get um like worried or angry so then so using games as that like therapeutic device is not a new concept this game has been tested and has been used within like children and assisting with their anxiety and with the with the good um kind of response so the the um anxiety levels were tested before using this game and then after and it, and it did show that the baseline anxiety level had decreased um but my research is more kind of on using it within young adults and adults especially at university level but the, on the other hand there are there is animal crossing which is that kind of there's this it's a social simulation video game series developed by nintendo and i'll i'll play this little clip it's really cute <laughs> Animal Crossing New Horizons lets you escape to an island all your own. In a world filled with possibilities, you're free to play how you want and share it with all your friends. Explore, create, and customize your island paradise anytime. Animal Crossing New Horizons, only on Nintendo Switch. See so, ya. Yeah. Within Animal Crossing, the player have, is a human. Um, they live in a village inhabited by these anthropomorphic animals and uh, like talking animals. And uh, um, you're kind of carrying out various activities such as fishing, bug catching, fox hunting. This series is kind of most notable for its um, open-ended gameplay and its Kind of extensive use of real time so it, it will simulate the real passage of time it'll get your console's time and if it's three o'clock in the real world it'll be three o'clock in your game and as well with animal crossing new horizon there's that customization of your island you can customize your house the actual island 
the furniture within your house and and there are these new DIY recipes for crafting tools um, and then these tools wear out and you have to craft them again and there's also I mean Animal Crossing has always had that multiplayer that social aspect but now it can be done um, on the online play so you can connect anywhere in the world to your friends rather than just using like local wireless and it's that social side of it and that um, within Animal Crossing that is creating that uh, positive environment for people. And so investigating whether uh, games have had a positive impact and, it, uh, and do improve mental well-being it is not a new concept. Uh, well, it relatively is new, but considering that uh, researchers in the past have kind of linked video games and scrutinized them for like, that negative impact that they have on an individual's character, especially with some researchers um, associating kind of mass killings with video games, uh, people that play violent video games. Yet uh, recently at Oxford University, they researched into um, Animal Crossing and uh, Plants versus zombies. That's it, yeah. Um, and to show that spent time spent playing these games have been associated with positive well-being, and the the study suggested that um, people who played the game kind of experience a level of kind of social uh, connection with other people and. And this has contributed to um, positive well-being. Um, and then it kind of stated that players who found joy uh, playing these video games reported a higher level of positive well-being. And the lead author and the professor behind this uh, research has said that these games don't essentially have a negative impact. It has been disproven that games do not have a negative impact on one's kind of being because of there's the, the complementary kind of components that do have um, a considerable impact on an individual's well-being. There's the social side of it, as I've said, that connecting um, with people. And, and they said that by, there's been talks about moderating video games and it, and regulating with that and these regulations may withhold the benefits um to from players and there's they stated they concluded that by playing these games um people are prone to have a, a better um mental health and there's like play time the higher the player time the, maybe the better your mental well-being will be but there's also other parts that link it, such as people from a higher income may have, um, they have more access to um, these consoles and um, they'll be able to afford them and as a way of improving their mental health. Uh, there's was a question by Chris. So what makes Animal Crossing a unique uh, for supporting positive wellbeing? I think, and it has been kind of proven that Animal Crossing is a good one because it has that customization within the environment. You're creating that world, um, you're customizing that world. You have your own stamp on that environment. It's, it's yours and no one else's. And that gets you like, engaged and then you're playing it more and then you're kind of creating your own little idyllic world. And then there's the social side of it, especially during the pandemic you you still have that ability to connect with people and kind of share your ideas share your furniture share your designs and that online community within animal crossing has has been essential to creating that community and that improving that mental health and so it has been validated that games as a way of improving mental health um is kind of connected to length of playtime, that social connection, the environment has a major impact on positive well-being. So Chris has asked again, so is it that you build the world to suit your own well-being needs, like building your own unique garden of Eden? I guess 
yes you create that environment you want to be immersed in that kind of safe space that you have all your kind of creature comforts in that game you you kind of create maybe the life that you want um because you're able to customize anything within the world you create your own house you kind of you go fishing you go uh hunt, hunting you go like hunting for fossils and you can go sell them buy more furniture improve your house so you are creating you're in your own little world creating your own kind of personal um bubble that garden of eden as you said uh, so next is kind of my research and my undergraduate research so my dissertation um, is all about a virtual reality application to expose users to crowded environments and it looked at presence and usability um, so I'll play this little clip I have of the so I built um, two uh, like environments there was the mark environment and then there was the uh, constant environment and this is the constant environment and so it surrounded a uh, virtual reality exposure therapy REIT and and it's a, uh, a cognitive behavioral therapy technique that exposes users to kind of levels of anxiety producing stimuli and this is a method of treatment which um, allows participants to, be, to overcome phobias through progressive desensitization. And this was the market scene. So you start off in a kind of a safe space, a place where it's kind of relaxing, has uh, nature sounds, water, like water moving, bird sounds. And then you can progress yourself into a um, the like anxiety maybe area, which is the marketplace. So yeah, there's this, um, so the research into virtual reality exposure therapy was uh, spearheaded by this guy named North, or well, that's his last name, uh, and this led to kind of this establishment of this technologically progressive cognitive behavioral therapy technique, the CBT um, therapy, and or, which treats, helps within the treatment of phobias and anxiety and panic disorders so I kind of looked at there's this um phobia called agoraphobia or agoraphobia and it's kind of a, a combination of a panic and anxiety disorder and it's depicted as kind of the reframing of go being within entering social situations or situations that are perceived to induce extreme fear and panic and there are um so I kind of took this phobia and kind of added it within the elements to my um, dissertation, but it, I tested the uh, environment on its ability to maintain presence and immersion. And with that kind of, it, it achieved a high level of presence and usability and immersion. And from this, it can then essentially be used as a therapy device because it does invoke those um emotions of kind of you are uh, kind of immersed in the scene that doesn't invoke a reaction a reaction an emotion out of you i've just seen a comment by will and there's oh so all right okay there's a game that does something similar i'll have to look at that then i haven't heard of it but yeah this is that is what is one to i wanted to create in the beginning of it was that 
um, kind of calming environment so that you can escape to that um, kind of little garden area if you feel overwhelmed or if you feel anxious. So then there are different kind of types of desensitization, which I looked at that these, this systematic desensitization is a type of exposure therapy, which um, kind of, as I said, kind of um, immerses people in these series of anxiety invoking stimuli to progressively desensitize them. Um, there are kind of two distinct ones. There's in vivo desensitization and it's um what is in vivo oh it's a method of uh, placing an individual with their specific phobia so to progressively desensitize them so for example an, an arachnid or a spider you can place someone in a room with them like at a distance and then next time you can get closer and closer and then you can essentially hold the spider to progressively kind of um make you feel more comfortable or, or you create those coping mechanisms to deal with that kind of situation but it's only useful when it's your phobia is a specific thing or a, a, a physical object and it can't really work for so like the fear of drowning you, you don't really want to immerse someone you don't want to like drown them so yeah <laughs> you don't want to do that but this could be used in a different um, kind of type of desensitization, which is called imaginal desensitization, where the individual imagines their phobia and kind of goes through a scenario to um, desensitize themselves. However, that is solely reliant on the individual's kind of imagination. But then you have the virtual side of it, the virtual reality exposure therapy, which is a combination of all of them. And it you are directly immersed within that environment and you're within the safe place and you can be immersed within with a spider without actually having to get a spider and you can be within a scenario without being in that dangerous situation um to then progressively desensitize themselves uh, so next is my phd research so the my undergraduate kind of led on to oh right okay so i can create an environment that does immerse someone how then do i help people so with covid it has brought us into this unprecedented era you hear that all the time and it and it does it has changed the way the students have engaged and interacted during their time at university and this abrupt change has revealed how kind of taxing that transition is for a student and and how that reduced and that reduced social and physical interaction can cause a toll on the on the student's psyche and so my research hopes to address and reduce any fears um or worries that a student may have through a game play interact and as you can see on the screen there's um the lincoln island which was developed by chris headley and my supervisor and his team and that has been a vital like step to virtually engaging students and virtually kind of transitioning students into the environment into the campus experience so that's what i'm targeting within my phd research is using games to help with that transition to help ease students within to the university life and there was um there's this game you can see in the bottom right here it's called my first day of school it's a bbc bite size game and it gets like nursery students or to engage in a game and go through a day um of what to expect so like they have playtime and then they have a lesson and then they get to go and do an activity all themselves so it's just that example day that could help them understand like the rules or what's going on and how a day is structured and that's how what I hope to create within my um re PhD research so thank you uh, for today's uh listening to my talk and uh, I hope you I hope I uh, kind of informed you well of what um, 
how video games and uh, what, how video games can help with anxiety and help with social anxiety um, and then kind of inform you of my research and helping students transition into university and if you're um, kind of interested in my research you can email me or like message me on teams so oh so thank you all 